torn between a small sporty cabrio and a proper roadster? You don't have to be. BMW reckons its 2 Series convertible offers the best of both worlds. So, you get four seats, but rewarding rear-wheel drive handling. A decent boot, but dynamic looks. Reasonable running costs, but all the power you could reasonably want. The result is a benchmark car in this segment. Barring a lottery win or a legacy, people like you and I aren't likely to ever find ourselves owning a truly exotic open-top sporting car. Still, perhaps that doesn't matter, given the desirability of the current crop of small, fast but fashion-friendly fabric roof models. Contenders like this one, BMW's 2 Series convertible. The Munich maker has a successful history when it comes to this class of cabrio. This car's 1 Series convertible predecessor, a best-seller in its segment. That model, though, was somewhat short of competition, being one of the few high-quality choices in a sector that otherwise left you with either a cramped, noisy open-top Mini, Audi's dumpy first-generation A3 Cabriolet, or something very obviously based on an ordinary family hatch from Peugeot, Renault or Volkswagen. You didn't have to think too hard to pick up the BMW keys from that bunch of options. This 2 Series convertible has a much tougher task ahead of it, primarily because its arch rival, that Audi A3 Cabriolet, has considerably sharpened up its act in Mark II model guys. On top of this, Cabriolet versions of cars like the Volkswagen Beetle and the Citroen DS3 now offer characterful and much cheaper wind-in-the-hair options for buyers requiring rear seats. Those not needing this feature might also look at out-and-out -out sports models like Mazda's rejuvenated MX-5 or Stretch to entry-level versions of models like Audi's TT Roadster or BMW's own Z4. In other words, with the extra choice on offer in this segment, you've now really got to want to buy this car. Fortunately for BMW, you might well want to. Compared to its predecessor, it is, after all, quieter, more spacious and will cost less to run, so it's easier to justify as everyday or the year-round transport. Plus, it's more comprehensively equipped, better connected and probably, most importantly, a good deal more stylish to look at. Interestingly, there's a touch more masculinity this time round, an impression especially emphasised by this potent six-cylinder M235i variant that slots in at the top of the range, there to offer near supercar levels of performance. Indeed, whichever version you choose, we're promised that a proper BMW driving experience will be on the cards. It all means that, unlike some cars of this kind, this one is more than just a fashion statement. But how much more? Time to put it to the test. So, what's it like? Well, you settle in behind the wheel and everything seems just right. The driving position perfect. Already you're feeling like driving rather than merely travelling. Punch the starter button. Get ready to set off and you'll find yourself looking forward to finding a road that will put the Bavarian maker's bold claims for this car to the test. Get to the first open bend and you find yourself pushing a bit harder than you might normally just to see. Sure enough, power into a corner, dab the brakes, turn the wheel and it's true, there's a feeling of perfect control. Yes, this convertible model's extra weight does detract a little from the razor-sharp handling you get in the 2 Series Coupe. That's down to the extra strengthening BMW has added into this derivative, making it fully 20% stiffer than the old 1 Series drop top. This model still easily sets the dynamic standard in its class though, thanks to ideal 50-50 axle load distribution, optimised aerodynamics, a long wheelbase and a low, ideally balanced centre of gravity. All of it combines with the distinctive rear wheel drive layout that's unique amongst four seater models in this class and there to give this car its impressive agility. As a result, this too is one of those rare cars that just feels right within the first 50 metres. This down to the sum of a whole series of small but important things that simply hit the right notes. 
The things I've just mentioned also combine with many others. Seating position, control weights, engine tractability, suspension refinement, basic ergonomics, stuff like that. As for the way that leaves you feeling, well, it's much like the sort of thing that you probably heard about interviewers you've faced having often made their decision before you've even got into your seat. First impressions are crucial, and this two series nails them. On the move like this with the roof up, you might notice that progress is surprisingly refined. In comparison with its predecessor, this car is claimed to be four decibels quieter. But of course, there are some times when you really want to hear the engine. Roof down, for instance. Retracting the hood takes just 19 seconds and can be completed at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. There's a bit of buffeting involved, of course, in driving al fresco, but it's not too bad by class standards. And you can keep the blowiness in check by fitting an optional wind deflector over the back seats. If you've upgraded from the old 1 Series convertible model, one of the first changes you're going to notice is the standard drive performance control system, the rocker switch for which you'll find down here by the gear stick. You might be familiar with this kind of thing by now, a setup that allows you to tweak the steering, throttle and stability control system thresholds depending on the operating mode you select. Gear change timings too, if, like many 2 Series buyers, you decide against this slick 6-speed stick shifter and audio car with the 8-speed automatic paddle shift transmission that I'm using here. There's also an optional quicker shifting sport automatic transmission that features a natty launch control system for would-be Alonso's. If you ignore the attributes of drive performance control or select its most relaxed comfort or efficient Eco Pro settings, then the travelling experience in this car, though very comfortable, won't be especially memorable. Push the rocker switch forward into sport though and the reaction you get immediately feels keener and more alert. More like the kind of 2 Series enthusiasts would expect this car to be. Provided you haven't chosen a variant fitted with the lower SE trim level, your car will also come with an extra Sport Plus setting that'll sharpen things up even more and relax the DSC control to provide a little more tail-out cornering leeway, if you should be that way inclined. To really create that kind of machine though, you have to spend a bit of extra money, possibly on stiff M Sport suspension, but preferably on the M Sport adaptive suspension setup that's on the model that I'm driving here, a system that works as part of drive performance control and is able to alter the ride to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. As with most BMWs, it's crucial that you get a few things right when you're specifying your car. As usual, I'd counsel you to carefully consider whether you really want the kind of larger wheel rim size that will inevitably spoil the ride quality. Also, think twice before upgrading uh, some of the things that are already very good anyway. The Servotronic electric power steering, for example, which in its standard form is fearsome and unerringly accurate. Many think that the extra cost variable sports steering system feels a little artificial. The same applies to the optional limited slip differential, there to get the power down through tight corners, but not hugely more effective than the standard electronic system in doing so. You could even say the same about the brakes, though if you're of a track day disposition then the M Sport braking system is well worth a look. Continuing on the less is more kind of theme, I wouldn't worry too much if your budget can't stretch to the really expensive models. All 2 Series Coupe variants get twin power turbo technology and any one of them is going to be a pretty rewarding thing to drive and own. Across the range, the slick shifting 6 speed manual gear shift is lovely as I've already suggested and the ride's good too, uh, suppler than you'll find on say a 1 Series hatch, despite this car's cornering sharpness. It's as well though that the German marketeers have decided not to carry across the feeblest power plants from the 1 Series hatchback into this 2 Series lineup, which means that the range begins with the 136 brake horsepower 218i petrol model. Plus, you can talk to your dealer about the alternative of a 143 brake horsepower 218d diesel derivative. Better still is the 190 brake horsepower 220D diesel variant that's also been engineered to work with optional X-Drive four-wheel drive. 
you will be wanting to know about performance. Well, even the base petrol 218i version makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 9.4 seconds on the way to 128 miles an hour. Get yourself the 220d diesel many will want and you can improve those figures to 7.5 seconds and 140 miles an hour. If you prefer not to fuel from the black pump, the 184 brake horsepower 220i petrol variant improves that showing to 7.5 seconds and 143 miles an hour. These kinds of figures give you some idea of the performance potential looking further up the lineup, which of course is where the really exciting engines are to be found. Take the 228i, the petrol powered pocket rocket that gives you a four cylinder engine with the punch and performance of a six. In this case we're talking of a 245 brake horsepower 2 litre turbo 4 that catapults this convertible to 62 miles an hour in just 6.1 seconds on the way to 155 miles an hour. It's a desirable machine then, but here I have an even nicer one, the awesomely fast M235i. With this variant I probably need to clear up a few product semantics. This drop top M235i isn't a proper M car like say the M3 or the M4 convertible models that BMW develops exclusively through its motorsport M division. The Munich maker wants to leave space for a fully fledged M2 convertible model to fill that role. Instead, this car sits within what the brand calls its M Performance lineup, a kind of stepping stone between the faster versions of its standard models and the ultimate M car machines. Think M Lite, and you won't be too far off the concept here. Or at least M Lite, in terms of the fact that you don't necessarily need a lottery win to afford the thing. In terms of performance, though, uh, well, you decide. At launch, it was the only six-cylinder two-series convertible model you could buy, and the three-litre power plant has 326 brake horsepower on tap, 11 brake horsepower more than a Porsche Boxster S, if you're interested. So it's seriously quick, with more power than the M3 convertible models that used to adorn my bedroom wall. Select the Sport Plus setting on the drive performance controller and the manual version will get you to 62 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds, while the 8-speed Sport Automatic variant I'm trying here shaves a further couple of tenths off that time. Both versions are restricted to a top speed of 155 miles an hour, although BMW engineers reckon that with no speed limiter these cars would top 170 miles an hour. That's serious performance for such a small convertible. Cast your mind back, how many really pretty four-seater compact convertibles can you think of? If like me you're struggling to remember many, then you'll particularly appreciate what BMW has tried to do here. In place of its predecessor's rather apologetic look, this 2 Series has a more confident, assured demeanour. Pretty, perhaps, is the wrong word for it. Handsome maybe is a better description. The previous model's slight degree of aesthetic awkwardness here replaced by far more elegant cohesive styling that avoids the need to be in any way gender specific. The stretch silhouette is certainly BMW through and through with its long bonnet, short overhangs and rear based cabin. Up front the double kidney grille leans slightly forward between twin round circular headlamps that narrow towards the centre, replicating the outlines of the lower air intakes. Here the lights are xenon units with lovely LED corona rings. What you probably won't notice is something the brand is especially proud of, its aero curtain, a feature that channels airflow around the front of the car to reduce aerodynamic drag. Derived from race technology, this sees air rooted into two ducts in the front apron, which then flows out of a narrow opening at high speed in the wheel arch. This jet of air effectively covers the side of the front wheels like a curtain and so reduces turbulence. It's a clever touch, as is the illusion that this is quite a compact car. In actual fact, the extra 72 millimetres of length and an additional 26 millimetres of width this model enjoys over its one series predecessor make this convertible almost as large as drop tops used to be from the next class up. BMW's old three series convertible for instance. 
Now this is more noticeable in profile where you can better appreciate these lovely swage lines that add plenty of shape to flanks which run right through the filler cap to the muscular tail section. The banana shaped sills of that old 1 series drop top have thankfully been ditched and instead you get this far more elegant sweep up to this beefy rear wheel arch, part of a broader rear end that sees single piece LED light units reach far into the car's flanks in a familiar L shape. But you'll be wanting to know about the roof. It's a soft top, unlike the complicated heavy metal folding arrangement you'll find both on BMW Z4 Roadster and on this model's larger, pricier 4 Series convertible stable mate. The use of fabric here obviously means that the hood's mechanism is lighter, but it also makes the folding process quicker, it takes just 19 seconds, and means that you can complete it at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. As you might have noticed, I've activated the folding process remotely from the key fob, functionality that comes courtesy of this car's extra cost comfort access feature. Thanks to this, if you've left the top down and you're across the road from your car in a pavement cafe when the heavens open, you can put the hood up without leaving your cappuccino. There don't seem to be too many downsides these days to having a fabric hood rather than a metal folding one. The tough three-layered material used here is as resistant to standing knives and malfunctioning garage car washing machines as it will be to the ravages of the toughest snowy winter. As importantly, this hood structure here trimmed with optional anthracite silver fleck aids refinement too, with noise levels reduced by four decibels over those of the old convertible one series model. With the hood up like this, you get a pretty reasonably sized 335 litre boot. That's 15 litres more than you get from a rival Audi A3 Cabriolet. This advantage disappears though, if uh, you retract the roof again. With the hood packed away, cargo room reduces to 280 litres, though that is still 30 litres more than the old soft top 1 series model offered. BMW reckons that even with the roof down, this car's boot is large enough to carry a couple of golf bags, though realising this capability means spending extra on the optional split folding rear seat mechanism that really should be standard. I think you have to have it. Pushing through from the boot reveals an aperture that the designers have widened by over 50% this time round, and the result is useful added versatility. Another crucial convertible feature that stops you from using the rear seats, and which really should be standard, is the optional fold-out wind deflector that reduces buffeting at speed. Plus, you'll probably uh, also want to tick the box for the extended storage pack that gives you this useful cargo tie-down net to keep your shopping in place so you don't have to worry about attacking a few of your favourite back roads on the long route home from the supermarket. Time to take a seat behind the wheel. Does the quality on offer justify the premium prices being asked here? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Compact Audi and Mercedes models shade BMW for interior flair these days, but somehow that doesn't seem to matter so much here. A driver-focused car should have a driver-focused cockpit, and this one does. In fact, there are very few small sporting models in the world that set you up better behind the wheel. Take a look around, and as I've already suggested, it's functional rather than flash, with the Munich maker's now familiar design language of two black-faced instruments in a driver-focused cowl. There's certainly more space to stretch out than this car's compact dimensions might lead you to expect, though with the roof up, shorter drivers might feel as if the high waistline of the car is a bit enveloping. Hood up, you'll also find over-the-shoulder visibility a bit restricted too, so BMW's decision to fit standard rear parking sensors across the range is welcome. Drivers used to the old 1 Series convertible will find the front three-quarter vision better, though, thanks to these slim A-pillars. Otherwise, the cabin will hold few surprises for existing BMW owners though there are a few plastic panels that feel quite hard to the touch. Overall, the high quality materials and solid construction impress, and it's this general classiness that makes it all feel special, rather than any standout detailing. 
What I think the brand is very good at is deciding what functions should remain as dashboard buttons, like the ventilation and the stereo, and which ones should be squirreled away into infotainment system menus. In this case, an iDrive setup, which has become one of the very best of its kind. Time to check out the rear seat. As with many compact convertibles, it's an area of the car that's not that easy to get to when the hood's up, especially if you're trying to lug a heavy child seat in and out. Roof down like this is obviously much easier, and once inside, you'll predictably find leg and hood up headroom as tight as it is with most models in this class, certainly tighter than it would be in a comparable 2 Series Coupe. Though small improvements have been made here over the old 1 Series model, enough to make these pews more usable for adults on short journeys. Predictably, only a couple of people can be accommodated, and the rear backrests are very upright. On the plus side, though, there's a cockpit-like feel to these chairs that rather suits the character of this sporty BMW. And you get a useful stowage compartment here into which you can clip a couple of cup holders. That's between these two berths. Most of the time, of course, you'll be using these seats to sling briefcases, jackets, or designer shopping bags onto, or indeed folding them down to increase boot space. BMW charges a premium of around £3,000 to move from a 2 Series Coupe to a directly comparable 2 Series convertible. As a result, if you're looking at this convertible model, you'll need to expect mainstream range pricing in the £26,000 to £32,000 bracket. Beyond that, the flagship M235i version I'm trying here sits alone at the top of the lineup priced at around £38,000 in soft top form. This derivative has one very complete level of spec, but elsewhere in the range, you get a choice of trim levels with Sport, Luxury and M Sport derivatives of most models. There's also the £1,500 option of 8-speed automatic transmission. The entry-level 218i petrol variant will doubtless be a very popular choice, not least because most of the other models in the lineup require a budget of at least £30,000. If you can stretch to that level, the 220D diesel version looks a good buy, priced at only around £800 more than a petrol 220i variant that offers pretty much the same power output. How do those prices compare with the BMW's rivals? Good question, and I'll start with a straightforward answer. If you care about the handling purity of rear-wheel drive that this 2 Series offers, there simply aren't any direct compact convertible rivals with four seats that you could consider, so that makes things easy. If you want rear-wheel drive in a compact, open-topped car and don't want this Munich model, your only option is to choose a compromised two-seat sports roadster, either the fun but very crude Lotus Elise, priced from around £30,000, or the desirable but expensive Porsche Boxster, priced from at least £40,000. To be frank, though, I can't see many potential customers of this BMW considering either of these two cars. The majority of buyers, though, probably won't care about the differences between front and rear-wheel drive, in which case they'll also be target market for this 2 Series model's closest direct rival, Audi's pretty A3 Cabriolet. The Audi, in its top S3 guise, provides the only credible opposition to the M235i model that I've been trying here, and costs similar money, though is hampered by an auto-only specification and its front-driven layout. More mainstream A3 Cabriolet models are also priced directly against their 2 Series convertible counterparts and are slightly more affordable to run. On the other hand, they're not quite as rewarding to drive and arguably not quite as pretty. Since most convertible buyers will want, above all else, for their cars to drive well and look good, it all means that BMW has good reason to feel confident in taking on its Ingolstadt arch rival here. Are there other options? Possibly. A few folks shopping for petrol power at the bottom of this 2 Series range might want to consider the fact that they could save £5,000 or more and get themselves a top mini convertible or Citroen DS3 Cabrio, but those are smaller, cheaper feeling cars. More pertinent, perhaps, is the fact that 2 Series convertible money would buy you a Volkswagen Golf Cabriolet or a Vauxhall Cascader with slightly more rear seat space. 
Typical BMW buyers, though, probably won't be tempted by the stodgier looks, higher running costs and vaguer handling that they'd get from these two cars. Otherwise, there aren't too many credible alternative choices that you could really make. I suppose if you were happy to choose something more focused and less day-to-day -day usable, a two-seat only Audi TT Roadster for a couple of thousand pounds more might be tempting. That car, though, is really more of a competitor for BMW's own Z4 Sports Roadster, the entry-level version of which, incidentally, wouldn't actually cost you very much more than a directly comparable version of this convertible 2 Series. Overall, I'm sure you're getting the idea. Though there are lots of sporty, open-topped, compact cars on sale, when you get right down to direct comparisons with this BMW, you realise that they're simply not the same, either because they don't offer four seats or because they're front-driven and therefore not as enjoyable to drive. Arguably, you'd have to move on to the next model up in this Munich brand's drop-top range, the larger metal-folding roofed 4 Series convertible, to properly replicate this recipe. Compare the two cars together where common engines and specs exist, and this ragtop 2 Series offers a saving of around £10,000 over its bigger showroom stablemate. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a 2 Series convertible that you really want, then you're going to need to know exactly how generous BMW has been with the standard spec. And the answer is that all the key items are in place. Go for one of the least powerful petrol or diesel models and there's a base SE trim level option that'll keep the asking price relatively affordable and give you most of what you'll want. To be more specific, in addition to the electric folding roof fitted across the range, that means alloy wheels of at least 17 inches in size with run flat tyres, uh, front fog lights, park distance control rear parking sensors, rain sensing wipers and chromed exhaust tailpipes. Inside, buyers also get air conditioning, Bluetooth phone connectivity, satellite navigation, a USB port and a decent quality six-speaker BMW professional stereo system with a DAB tuner and controls on the sport multifunction steering wheel that's trimmed in leather. Plus, there's an iDrive infotainment system with a 6.5-inch colour screen that also displays the parameters for the drive performance control setup with its Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport modes. These alter throttle response, steering feel, the stability control system threshold and, on automatic models, gear shift timings. That's a reasonable tally, but many buyers of lower power models will want to add to it by upgrading to plusher sport specification. With the higher powered mid-range variants, sport trim is actually the specification starting point. Either way, it's a level of trim that adds sport seats, ambient lighting, various interior and exterior trim embellishments, sport instrument dials on the infotainment screen, and an extra sport plus mode to the drive performance control system. Plusher trim levels deliver things like 18-inch alloy wheels and leather upholstery. As for M235i equipment, well, it runs to lovely M double-spoke 18-inch alloy wheels shod with high-grip tyres that aren't of the run-flat variety. Then there's a whole series of features that are optional further down the range, some of them tweaked specifically to suit this derivative. Here I'm talking of items like the M Sport braking system and unique M Sport suspension, plus Xenon headlights with neat LED Corona rings and power washers, unique variable sport steering, M aerodynamic body styling, an M rear spoiler and more practically an auto dimming rear view mirror, two zone automatic air conditioning and the extended storage pack that gives you useful fastening straps in the boot. On to extra cost items. It's a bit disappointing that right across the range you have to pay extra for two features we think to be essential on this car. The split folding rear seats that allow you to push through items from the boot and the wind deflector that minimises roof down buffeting on the move. In addition, as is becoming depressingly common on modern cars, you have to pay extra for a space saver spare wheel if you don't want one of those fiddly tyre mobility kits. Personally, I'd also want seat heating as a non-negotiable on a convertible car, particularly if you specified leather seats. 
Otherwise, though, the options list tally seems reasonable. Though, of course, can be financially ruinous if you don't keep your books ticking in check. Let's start with the dynamic stuff. The variable sport steering and M Sport braking system options you have to pay extra for on mainstream models are really for enthusiasts only. As for the suspension, I'd counsel you to avoid paying extra for firmer M Sport suspension and instead put the money towards the adaptive M Sport suspension setup that I've been trying here that allows the drive performance control modes to also alter the ride to suit the mood you're in and the road you're on. Plus, it's worth looking at a visibility package, including adaptive xenon headlamps that turn with the bends. When it comes to more luxury orientated features, the Extras catalog predictably includes some real tempters. OK, so you could maybe easily do without power folding mirrors, a heated steering wheel and brushed aluminium interior trim. But you shouldn't listen to the optional Harman Kardon Logic 7 sound system with its 12 speakers and multi-channel DSP amplifier if you think your resolve is going to crumble. I'd also be interested in the comfort access feature that makes it possible to activate the roof mechanism by pressing your key fob and can allow you to open the car doors and start the engine without having to use that key. Slotting into spaces could be made easier by a park distance control system that includes front sensors and maybe also a uh, reversing camera. Don't go spending too much on items like these though until you've considered the merits of BMW's various connected drive media packages. Now these include the latest BMW professional media package with its wider 8.8 inch screen. The navigation setup can also divert you around jams with real-time traffic information and BMW online services. There are also the latest infotainment features like full speech recognition and voice control with an optional message dictation function. Plus, you can activate the clever Google Center Car System too, this allowing you to plan your route beforehand on your PC, then remotely forward it to your vehicle. You'll have access to various BMW apps too. The BMW Connected app allowing in-car use of web radio and linking you into social networks like Facebook and Twitter. The My BMW Remote app even enables you to remotely lock or unlock your car if you lose your keys. Safety, as you'd expect from BMW, is well accounted for and it's the same whether you choose a baseline variant or this potent performance model. There are rollover bars that trigger automatically in fractions of a second if any of the car's sensors detect that you might be about to flip. There are the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a very good latest generation DSC Plus stability control system that gives you a bit of leeway when the car's switched into Sport Plus mode, but will ultimately step into the rescue if your ambition outweighs your talent. There's also tyre pressure monitoring, a pedestrian friendly active bonnet, Isofix child seat attachments front and rear and anti-lock brakes with emergency brake assist to help in panic stops advertised to following motorists by automatically flashing dynamic brake lights. All models uh, are also come fitted with the BMW's emergency call system via which in an accident the car will automatically summon help alerting the emergency services to your exact GPS location. Could be a lifesaver. The key safety option is what BMW calls its driving assistant pack, which includes six key electronic camera based features. These include forward collision warning to tell you if you're getting too close to the car in front, a high beam assistant that automatically dips your headlights for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic, uh, then there's a pre preventative pedestrian protection feature that warns you if someone's about to step off the pavement in front of you. A speed limit information setup that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. A lane departure warning system to stop dozy drivers veering out of their lanes on the highway. And perhaps most importantly, a city collision mitigation system that at urban speeds scans the road ahead as you drive looking for accident hazards. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident.
One of the reasons that you'll be buying a smaller convertible is to get yourself smaller running costs. Sure enough, this 2 Series convertible is about 10% cleaner and more frugal than its larger 4 Series convertible Stablemate. Mind you, it should be, given the fact that that car has to lug around the kind of heavy metal folding roof BMW doesn't bother with here. This 2 Series claims to deliver fuel economy improvements of around 18% over its 1 Series convertible predecessor, with much of the reason for that down to BMW's now familiar efficient dynamics technology. Here it includes features like electric power steering, brake energy regeneration and an auto start stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Plus, weight has been paired back and aerodynamics have been improved. Also playing their part in this model are the so-called aero curtains, integrated into the front apron to channel air over the wheels and around the side of the car, helping to reduce turbulence. And talking of wheels, on most 2 Series models you'll find these shod with efficient low rolling resistance run flat tyres. I say most because this M235i is the exception, fitted with some rather more hardcore Michelin Pilot sports rubber. But the driver must also play his or her part, so there's an optimum gear shift indicator on the dash and in the drive performance control system an Eco Pro mode that you can select. This will focus all of the car's systems on ultimate frugality. This can reduce fuel consumption by up to 20% by modifying accelerator and engine management responses, putting the climate control into its most efficient setting and even giving the driver tips on how to drive economically. Uh, that's through the proactive driving assistant feature provided by the professional navigation system. It's also worth mentioning that opting for the 8-speed automatic gearbox I have here rather than the 6-speed manual will also improve your running cost returns by a few percentage points. So to the figures all that effort generates across the twin power turbo Euro 6 engine range. Let's take the popular 220D diesel model as an initial example. True, its fuel and CO2 readings, 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometre of CO2, aren't quite as good as those of a rival Audi A3 Cabriolet 2-litre TDI 184 PS. On the plus side though, you're talking of running cost returns that are way better than those you get from a directly comparable Vauxhall Cascada 2-litre CDTI 195 PS, and figures that manage to be a match for something much smaller and less powerful, like a Mini Cooper SD convertible. What about petrol power? Well, again, this car manages to post some pretty competitive figures, though still lacks a little behind that directly comparable Audi. The 218i will deliver 48.7 miles to the gallon on the, on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometre of CO2. Go for the 220i and those figures fall to 42.2 miles to the gallon and 157 grams per kilometre. But there's less of an argument for buying that derivative given that you can get a lot more power and performance in the 228i model with only a marginal efficiency downside. A 228i convertible after all manages 41.5 miles to the gallon and 159 grams per kilometre. It's a good option if you can't stretch to the potent M235i variant I'm trying here. If you can, then you'll find that this M model can deliver 33.2 miles to the gallon and 199 grams per kilometre of CO2 when fitted with manual transmission. With an auto gearbox like the one I'm using here, those figures improve to 35.8 miles to the gallon and 184 grams per kilometre. What else? Well, there's a condition-based service indicator and those maintenance costs can be kept in check with two optional servicing packages which cover you for servicing or servicing and maintenance for five years or 50,000 miles. Residual values? Well, they should be strong as long as you don't go wild with options. Experts predict that this car will retain around 50% of its original value after the usual standard three-year ownership period. On to insurance, another area where this 2 Series holds an advantage over some of its rivals. You're looking at Group 21 or 22, that's as a rating for the 218i, Group 27 for the 220d, Group 28 or 29 for the 220i, Group 33 for the 228i and Group 40 for this M235i.
This is the small, compact, sporting convertible that many of us always felt BMW was capable of delivering. True, it's still not the most efficient car in its class, and there's the usual premium pricing to consider. What's important, though, is that this 2 Series convertible is so much more usable and self-assured than its predecessor, and now the kind of car you really don't need to make too many compromises to own. Not that there's anything wrong with well-judged compromise. In fact, in terms of market positioning, that's exactly what you're getting here. A car that's as comfortable in taking on out-and-out -out sports models like Audi's TT Roadster as it is in dealing with the same brand's more boulevard-orientated A3 Cabriolet. That's impressive. So is this 2 Series convertible style, refinement and multimedia connectivity. In the final analysis, though, what will sell this thing to you is its road-going experience, its lust for life, and the way it will remind you of what driving used to be about when all that's ahead is a ribbon of twisting tarmac. Ultimately, it's the kind of car that BMW does better than almost anyone.